Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Better Wealth Reacts. My name is Caleb Williams, and I just want to thank every single one of you that have been reaching out with video ideas. It has put a smile on my face, and it's crazy to see all the ranges of videos that you guys are sending me. Appreciate that. This is a video that I'm going to be reacting for the very first time live, raw, um, and it is, it's a video that almost has 7 million views. Um, it, the title of it is Accountant Explains Money Habits Keeping You Poor. I watched like the first 10 seconds of it, and I was like, this is going to be amazing. She's got the best British accent in the world. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in. I'll be giving my two cents throughout the video. And then, like always, my final thoughts at the end. So without further ado, let's jump in. I have spent the last decade of my life immersing myself in the field of finance and money through a degree in finance, a qualification in accounting and then a career in investment banking. And one of the most life-changing skills I have learned through it all is how to handle my own finances, recognize my bad money habits and break free from them. So in this video, I'm going to share with you nine of the most common bad money habits that hold people back and tips on how to break out of them. Number one, paying yourself last. I first heard of this in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And it's one of the blueprints in achieving financial freedom. Robert explains that the way people pay their bills can be broken down into two types. The first way is the poor people's habit, and that is through paying yourself last. So as soon as your paycheck comes in, you then pay your rent, your phone bill, your subscriptions, you fund your social plans, and then you'll save whatever's left over if there is even any money left to save. The second method he talks about is the rich people's habit and they do the complete opposite. They pay themselves first and that is what you want to do. Take 10% minimum and put that into your savings account the minute you get paid. Treat it like paying a bill. This is so important and by doing this you're guaranteeing that that money will be saved and won't just slip through your fingers through spending. A lot of people are probably thinking there is no way I can do this. I live paycheck to paycheck but the surprising thing is when you take that 10% and put it away your mind will think of ways and structure your spending and structure your finances to last for the whole month and you won't even realize that you're saving in the background. I think there's two things I'll say to this. I, I got this concept from The Richest Man in Babylon where he says a tenth of what you make is yours to keep. And I remember someone presenting on this and they literally gave the equation. What most people do is they bring in money, they have an expense and then whatever's left over they save and as you can probably imagine that's an unintentional way to live your life and as a result you'll be broke you'll never break through because you weren't intentional about taking your money and having it work for you versus like what what she's saying is you have money you pay yourself first and the person that was uh first introduced me to richest man babylon said if you you pay yourself first even if you can't pay other people and that was like an extreme for me, but he he realized that if you don't put a value on you, you will never get ahead and every month will go by and you'll just be like, oh, I guess we couldn't save this time. We couldn't save this time. And so you just, just gets to, you have to create a disciplined plan uh, and that's intentional to get to where you want to go. Last thing I'll say, just because I'm in a chatty mood right now is, you know, I, I talk to people and usually in the first one minute if i'm just talking to them um i'll know like are they going to succeed are they going to be successful are they going to um just be like an ordinary person that's really not getting ahead and doesn't really have much ambition and the number one thing that i'm looking for is that intentional purposeful next step like this is what i'm doing this is what i'm doing and i, I talked to someone recently that you know had very little ambition from a standpoint of of the, what they were doing in their career, what they were doing with their money. And then well, little did I know after you open up kind of what's been going on, um, they're, they're a disaster behind the scenes. And I say that with all due respect, but it's, but it's because of the compounding nature of unintentional decision-making. And so I uh, love this. If you can't pay yourself first, it doesn't matter all the kind of cool things that we talk about on this channel and so many other books, your, your foundation is, is built on sand. People don't realize how much they're spending on paying the bills, buying something new, going on that weekend away, and then they save whatever's left. But that is the backwards mentality. The key is to pay yourself first instead of making other people richer by buying their things before you pay yourself. The second bad money habit is getting comfortable with bad debt. It seems that debt these days is actually the norm. People are using debt to buy the smallest of things, to buy presents, to buy clothes. I have a straight rule. That is, unless I can afford to pay for that thing yeah. outright in cash, 
I shouldn't be buying it with any form of debt. Remember, credit card companies want you to be bad with your finances because that's how they make money from this. The average credit card interest rate is 22%, which cancels yep. all kind of benefits and rewards these credit card companies are providing if you're Horrible. not able to pay them off in time. All right, so here's here's my two cents as it relates to being comfortable with bad debt, 100% agree. If you don't have the money for it outright to pay in cash, don't think about putting it on a credit card. And there's so many things like, I mean, you could pretty much finance everything. I, I was on Amazon the other day and I was, I was like buying this thing for a hundred bucks and it was saying, well, you could use four payments of, you know, $25 a piece. And I was just thinking like, this is how dangerous this is because people are broke and this debt is extending them in this hole that they'll never be able to get out of. So I 100% agree. Um, I'm even going to take a big stance and start looking at rent versus owning. And I really want to create a framework for you all to figure out, should you be renting your personal home or should you be uh, actually owning? Because I think more and more like more and more when I look at the data doesn't necessarily mean that everyone should should own. And and so that's just an example of the one exception that I would make in the past is, well, you don't necessarily need to have all the money for a mortgage. And now I'm really taking a look at at this, the more and more people I see. And, and as I'm doing research to say, yeah, owning can be great, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a fit all for everyone's financial situation. So more to come there. But I 100% agree, if you don't have the money for it, don't put it on a credit card, don't use any form of finance, um, you will regret it in the end. So now let's go to number three. It's not having a stockpile. This ties into point number one, which is about paying yourself first. And essentially it's saving enough so that you have a buffer behind you of about three to six months. This is super important and it will give you peace of mind just by having this buffer kept to one side and available to tap into if you need it. You free up that mental energy to designate to more important things. So how do you gather this six months of buffer? It's through that paying yourself first. Start putting that 10% away and once you have your stockpile, then you can start using the additional money you save to building into your investment fund and looking at investments. Guys, it's not just the British accent. Like she is so spot on. I love this video so far. Yeah, so what she's saying is pay yourself first, build up, she calls it a buffer asset. You could call it an emergency fund. Pretty much build up, think about it from you're saving money into a bucket and you're, and you're saving it to whether it's six months. I prefer a year, but regardless of what that number is, you save that up. And then the moment that you hit your number, then think of it as overflowing. And that overflowing is represented to now we can go reinvest or we can invest it or put it in, you know, maybe other accounts that can get us maybe a greater rate of return, but we might have less access to it. So I love a buffer and, and, and a savings account and an emergency fund. I believe the rate of return on a 0% emergency fund is far greater because it allows you to show more powerfully, it allows you to reinvest more strategically and it might create opportunities that you might be able to say yes to something versus the person that does not have any buffer in their life. So love point number three. Number four is not knowing your income or expenses properly until you know what your starting point is. How do you know where you want to be? There's something called lifestyle inflation and that is your spending will rise as your income rises. The more money you make, the more you spend. And it's a cycle. Make more money, buy a bigger house, buy a nicer car, spend more, make more. And it's crazy how normal this is, but it is a recipe for disaster. You want to be in control of your finances and mapping out where things are going. A budget tracker is super important and you want it to include how much you're making, how much you're paying yourself first, that 10% we spoke about, your expenses, so your bills, your mortgage, your rent, your spending, your debt repayments, and so on. And you want to be keeping on top of that budget tracker. At least every three months, set a date night with the tracker. People who know exactly where they are financially, they know their assets, they know their liabilities, they have a clear goal on where they want to go financially and all, they, all the steps they need to take to get there are more likely to get a lot of money and build wealth compared to people who just fantasize about money but have no idea how to go about it, how they plan to acquire it or how to manage it. Just being mindful of this stuff and seeing those numbers in black and white will trigger you into action. 
love that. I love this. Have a date date night with your with your spending tracker. Here, here's the deal. Any successful business will have what's called a PL and a balance sheet. PL, profit and loss. Every month we get statements of like all the incoming cash flow into our business and all the all the cash flow that's leaving our business from anywhere from like anything, any purchase, we're we're able to have our eyes on it. If you do not run your personal economy like a business, how in the world will you have any pulse on what's going on? How will you have any accountability? And so there's a phrase that I learned right when I got into this space of helping people with money is, and then the phrase goes, if you track it, you control it. And so the best thing is figure out a way to track the incoming cash flow and where it's going and then keep a way to track your overall balance sheet your assets and and debts and and to see your net worth and cash flow hopefully continuing to trend in the right direction a lot of people ask me what apps i recommend and maybe that could be a whole nother video at the end of the day whatever can help you track the money um because whatever can get you involved in it um, there's a lot of good apps out there um but what we found is sometimes you just need to do it by hand, um, and that might sound crazy, but whatever whatever can insert you into the financial equation is what you should do. Fifth bad money habit is having expensive hobbies. A lot of people like to shop, and I guess, yeah, part of this is retail therapy, but again, marketing, social media, and these multi-billion pound organizations love to tell us how much we need to spend our money and spend our cash instead of keeping and investing it. Yeah, that was, that was a quick one. Expensive hobbies. Uh, an example of this is um, I just picked up pickleball. I love pickleball and it's way less expensive to play than let's say a round of golf. And so this is not something like for me, I also factor in time, but I think you should look at like, okay, what are the things that you like to do? And maybe there's a world where it's like, why do you like doing these things? And I would just just challenge you to, to take a look at that. I, we're all about intentional living here at Better Wealth, but there's some of us that are doing a hobby or doing something for fun that's costing a ton of money and a ton of time. And we might be able to shift a couple things and really add up and free up a lot of, a lot of money in the process. Um, I think it all depends on who's listening and what financial situation you're in. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm in, a, in a space in my life where I care more about time than money. And so I'm, I'm really careful that hobbies don't take crazy amounts of time away from, from the people that I love. Or if I'm doing hobbies, I want to do it with the people that I love. So I think it's just, it's just important to, to have a framework of how you're going to decide to say yes to this hobby. Next up, we have focusing purely on saving. If you want to improve your financial position, you can firstly save more of your existing income or you can make more money and create more income streams. And the ideal combination is a mixture of both. You can't build wealth if you're making more money and spending it all, but you also can't if you're just focusing on the saving side because there is a cap to how much you can save. Using those cashback sites will only get you so far. So to truly build wealth, you have to think of both sides of the equation, both how you will save a larger percentage of your income, but also how you will make more money. Saving money side has a cap. The making money side does not, it's infinite. There is unlimited potential upside, whether it's investing in the stock market, asking for a pay rise, starting a side hustle. You want to break the bad money habit of thinking that saving money is going to massively increase your wealth. No. I, I, I tend to agree with this is, is figure out ways where you can create more and it's going to come by creating value. So if you want to make more money, figure out how you can take your time, your skill set, and how can we create more value that will translate into extra cash. Now the, now the ninja aspect is if you're already tracking your money, you know where it's all going. And so every dollar that you're making above what's current your lifestyle, that will be able to accelerate your savings, emergency funds and future investments. Um, and then on the on the flip side, where you invest your money that also needs to be tied to value creation. So whether it's the stock market, whether it's real estate, whether it's businesses, you just really want to be able to say, whatever are my inputs are, whatever I'm investing, what what is the value that's creating because I'm investing this time or my skill set or this money. And if you can if you can get in the mindset of not just as as Grant Cardone would say, savers are losers, but if you can be like, okay, how can I how can I now create more value? And and she says it's infinite. And I tend to agree it is infinite. Um, value creation is not a zero sum game. Number seven, paying too much in taxes. Yep. Taxes are going to be the single biggest expense in your life. Whilst everyone has to pay tax, a lot of people just pay it without considering how you can legally 
reduce your bill legally is the key word here. The wealthy, they have knowledge of illegal corporate structures that come with tax advantages. They hire tax advisors that help them minimize their tax bill. So if you want to get one step ahead, one of the best ways to increase your wealth is through understanding tax rules in a way that stack up in your favor. For example, investing through an ISA or a Roth IRA, which is an investment account that shelters your dividend and profit from taxes or operating under a business instead of an individual if you're a solopreneur. All of this stuff is absolutely legal. And if you are someone who disagrees with this and prefers to pay more taxes, regardless of whether or not you can reduce it legally, then it doesn't hurt to understand the tax rules and reduce that tax bill so that you can instead use the money to give back to things that directly align with your values instead of letting someone else decide where that money should be going. If you want me to make a video on tax, I was planning to, I already have a summary on what I want to include, but I have been a bit skeptical about whether to release this. It's a topic that can go either way. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see. I l love this. We actually have a tax checklist where it gives, gives you the five fundamental ways that can help you pay less in taxes. And if you want to get that checklist, I think you can go to betterwealth.com slash tax checklist. And I think you can grab it there. Um, overall, I believe money is better spent by you or used by you than the government. And we should legally, she underlined that as well, legally, try to pay as little as possible and it's actually our it should be like our uh, goal it, it, it's it should be a crime to overpay on tax and so um that's one of those things where don't don't over tip the government figure out how you can be as efficient as possible as it relates to to the tax side and if you are especially an entrepreneur this is probably the area that you're getting crushed the hardest in and so make sure you're working with someone whether it's us or somebody that can help you with tax strategy this is an area that we are becoming more and more obsessed about at Better Wealth because it's so, so key. Number eight, waiting too long to invest. When you start having savings, you have that stockpile, that buffer that we spoke about. Then you want to start looking at investing that money so that your money starts working for you and you want to diversify those investments so you can weather different situations that come around in life. But you want to avoid leaving that money in a bank account because inflation is a thing and it means that you're essentially losing money every year. So I have a mixture of safe investments of riskier investments that I'm willing to lose as well. Start looking at different investment strategies once you've saved up enough. Don't leave any additional money more than you need to in a bank account. All right, so overall, my overall rating is 9.5 out of 10. I thought she was incredible. I, and those of you that are like, why not 10 out of 10? I think I'm actually going to give her a 10 out of 10 because I think she did a great job. I'm going to give her 10 out of 10 for a couple reasons. Number one, wonderful, clean environment. Number two, all the points were very thought through. Number three, she had like the coolest British accent um, out there. And number four, um, she wasn't crazy over hypey and I actually loved a lot of her advice. So let me just walk you through some of the notes that I took. So it's important to pay yourself first. And, and if you can just be intentional with that, it will be like the domino that will make everything else possible. And it's interesting because I, when I think of saving and investing, I see it as the same thing because I think of saving as the verb that's like moving money. And then the investing is like the then one of the phases of savings. And once you save up money, now you can invest. So that was one, that was one of the points that I wanted to make. Um, you know, being like not being okay with debt or bad debt. Um, I just think the more and more that I've been you know, experiencing where people are at, I was just like, don't use debt um, if you can't use cash and really decide should you buy this thing because debt couldn't be an enabler. And whenever debt is enabling an investment or a consumption item, I think it's going to be a huge mistake. I love the fact that she called it a buffer savings and really creating buffer. I think that is uh, something that needs to be talked about more. If you are an entrepreneur, you should be you should be working towards six to 12 months of emergency fund and you should not invest in anything until you build that up. Obviously, you have your business, you have your essential areas that's bringing in the cash flow. But the biggest mistake people make is they're investing too soon and their foundation is not built with any substance. Uh, a lot of people are flying blind. They don't know their numbers. Uh, a lot of businesses are flying blind, but personally track your money. Those who track your money, you'll control it. Um, don't have expensive hobbies. I think that's really good to just audit. How do you like to have fun? Is it possible to be more intentional, be with the people that you love like, and not have to spend a ton of money in the process? I think that's a good um, thing to look at. Um, saving versus investing. I think uh, Grant Cardone says that savers are losers. 
Um, I think it is important to know that if you're just going to sit on money and not do anything with it, um, that that could be a problem. But I think the what I would more highlight is create value, create value in your time, your skill sets, and create value in how you invest your money. Um, stop overpaying the government. I'm 100% behind that. Be it really, really clear. Uh, are you paying more taxes than you have to? Um, and and then don't wait super long to to invest. Start. And I think that was the point that I was like, maybe maybe that point didn't need to be added um, because I thought I don't know if that's a new thought in in everything else that she talked about. But overall, I absolutely love this video. Would love to hear your thoughts. Is is was there a, a habit that you were convicted on, or you would you would add to this? Um, overall, the the one thing that I would add to this whole video is just the importance of thinking with the end in mind and, and clarity. And I, and I do respect if it's like, hey, we don't have to get super cute and kumbaya to figure out our money. But I do think it's important to be like, what is the goal? Because I think a lot of times we can be, um, you know, especially when it comes to saving and investing, a lot of times if we're saving and investing for something, because we have clarity of where we want to go, there's a lot more that there's a lot more momentum that can be built than just doing it just to do it. And I think that's one of the reasons people are broke is they they don't have a purpose worth living for and they have not created that clarity around their own personal life. So just my final thoughts. Appreciate you as always. And we'll see you tomorrow.